And we do have some breaking news out of the doomsday cult mom murder case. Attorneys for Lori Vallow Daybell have filed a motion for a new trial. Now, in the filing, Daybell's attorneys claim the following. The court misdirected the jury in a matter of law as it related to the jury instructions on conspiracy. Two, the court misdirected the jury as a matter of law as it related to the amended indictment. And three, a jury interview revealed that the jury instructions were confusing and that that juror, there was a juror who did an interview, knew of evidence not submitted to the jury. All very serious issues. Now, the filing cites an interview that the juror number eight did with East Idaho news reporter Nate Eaton following Daybell's conviction. Now, we have that interview and have pulled the part specifically outlined within the filing. Let's take a listen. Having seen all the evidence, all the thousands of hours spent, how would you describe the efforts of law enforcement? You know, um, I, I think they, they did a good job with what they had. I, I don't know, I don't know that you ever can really train for something like this. I, I think they did a, a good job with what they had. Um, you know, you question some, some things that happened and I'm sure there's a reason for it. I, I'll probably never know, but you question, had some things been done different early on, would any of us be here? Do you have an example of one of those things? Um, well, and, and, and we didn't consider this during our deliberations because we, it was clear to us, the instructions were clear. Arizona, evidence and testimony is only for demonstrative purposes. Sure, yeah. And we, and we all were very, very respectful of the rules, the directions that we were given. But now being removed from that, I think the, the police department in Phoenix had some significant red flags that had they been followed up on, you know, maybe we're not here. Do you mean after Charles was shot? Uh, before and after. Before and after. Before, yeah, you're right. Before he was shot. Mm -hmm. That body cam. All right, let's bring in the Think Tank now. Joining us tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney, entertainment attorney, and former assistant DA, Daryl Cohen, is with us. Also with us tonight in Washington, D.C., the attorney who represented Johnny Depp in his defamation case, and also a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers, Ben Chu, and in Los Angeles, deputy public defender for L.A. County, Philip Dubé. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining me this evening. Truly appreciate it. And Ben, I'll start with you. This raises some interesting issues. Although I will say, in listening to the interview, the juror says the right things, but is that enough? Michael, it's a pleasure to be with you. No, I, I don't think it's enough to get a new trial here. I think they're grasping at straws. Hmm. Well, explain to me. I mean, it's very clear what they're saying is that this jury may have. Now, notwithstanding what the juror said, um, Ben, they may have considered some evidence that was not presented at trial or looked at evidence that was just prevent, presented for demonstrative purposes in a different way. I understood. This, this is all after the fact. And I, I think uh, my hunch, and I'll be interested in hearing from your other guests, is that this is not going to be sufficient to, to get them a new trial. All right, Daryl Cohen, I want you to ring in on this issue. There's three different issues. Um, there's one involving the conspiracy law that it was initially brought forth as a conspiracy involving more than two people, up to five people, and amended that, and the trial only involved a conspiracy of two people. Um, we also have that the wording in the grand theft uh, was amended at some point, and it was objected to, but the judge allowed it. That might have caused some confusion. And, of course, this juror issue. Your thoughts? Well, I agree 1,000%. When you are convicted of murder and you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison, you're going to grasp at straws. You're going to go down for the third or the fourth time in the middle of the ocean. She's looking, her lawyers are looking for something. They can look until the cows come home and they will not find it. She's toast. All right, Philip Dubé, um, do you agree? 
Oh yeah, I do. There's nothing here. You know, as far as the uh, the juror misconduct, essentially by considering extrajudicial statements, he, the juror was pretty clear that they followed the judge's instructions, that they did not consider it, okay? They rendered their verdict, but then later on, as he's contemplating what went on and what was presented, he kind of added uh, that, you know, that there is some aspects of the evidence that should be explored, specifically as it relates to uh, the Cox homicide, but it didn't play into their deliberations. As to the conspiracy, the uh, error of law, I respectfully disagree with the defense on this. The prosecution only has a burden of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that two or more co-conspirators conspired to kill. If they said, for example, well, there may be four, there may be five, that's fine. They don't have to prove it as long as they meet the, the baseline element of two or more co-conspirators, because you need two or more to reach an agreement. If you don't have three, if you don't have four, it's okay. It reminds me of a civil lawsuit where you name Doe defendants and they will all be identified later if and when you decide to pursue them. Well, in this particular case, they only decided to present the evidence as to two or three co-conspirators and it was sufficient under the law. All right, one final question on this issue, Ben. Do you think the court might uh, find reason to bring jurors back and question them about any of these issues? No, and I agree wholeheartedly with Daryl and Philip in that regard.